Today we'll have the ultimate battle of the camps. In one corner, the mighty little brother of the former footy film flagship, the charcoal silver fighter with interchangeable lenses, the footy film XT30. And in the other corner, the poor man's Leica, the ND filtered fixed lens opponent, the last iteration of a legendary series, the footy film X100V. Fight! First, as usual, don't forget to click the subscribe button below, that really motivates me to make more videos like this. Well, I really believe that a lot of people will face this decision to buy one or the other camera, because the two may not be similar from the outside, but they are fundamentally similar in terms of their basic technology. The same sensor, the same processor, meaning the same image quality in general, the same battery, both have a tilting touchscreen now, but you might still think that two very different opponents are meeting. First, a rangefinder camera with a fixed 23mm lens, the fifth edition of the X100 Street and Travel Camera series. On the other hand, the smaller sibling of the X-T3, which can keep up with its big sister, with the exception of a few compromises in body and video performance. However, with this DSLR-style camera, we have the whole world of Fuji X lenses to choose from. So, the big question is, why should one camera be more valuable to you than the other? I made a little table for the points to award. First, the main categories, for which there are two points to be won. This is followed by additional features, two of which are so important that there is one point each. And finally, there are a few smaller features, each of which means half a point. So let's try to find out today which of these is for you. And spoiler alert, in the end it will be, of course, your personal pros and cons that make the difference. If you don't have money, you may be able to turn off my video after this part. I'll talk about it right now to not waste more of your precious time. So let's start with the hard facts and assume that you want to buy both cameras brand new. The X100V currently costs 1499 euros in Germany and 1399 dollar in the US. In contrast, you can find the XT30 body only currently for around 700 euros or 790 US dollars. But of course we have not yet bought a lens with the XT30. It's still only the body with which we can of course not do anything. To keep it fair we want to buy the exact same setup, so we have to add the price of the XF 23mm f2, the most wanted focal length for street and travel, a 35mm full frame equivalent. The cheapest price in Germany for this is currently 369 euros. In the US I can find it for around 375 dollars at the moment. So here we have a pretty clear winner. The XT30 is definitely the cheaper option at the moment. Today I will not compare the 23mm lens of the X100V with the other 23mm changeable options from Fujifilm. Leave me a comment if you want a video about that. But by seeing other people's reviews who already did the comparison, it seems to be that the 23mm f2 WR lens, this one here, is slightly ahead regarding AF performance and sharpness followed by the new lens of the X100V. And the 23mm f1.4 is last, but has of course the largest aperture. I don't know the 1.4 option personally, but in my opinion the two f2 lenses are great, with an advantage of the X100V due to the smaller minimum focus distance of only 10 cm compared to the 23-22 cm of the interchangeable f2 lens. But back to topic. I think today versatility is what most users want. You don't want to be trapped in one section of photography. Maybe you want to do all kinds, from macro to the widest landscape. And regarding versatility, a camera body for interchangeable lenses should clearly lay a hat. And of course it will also be like this here. So with the X-T30 all gates are wide open for you for the wide range of lenses offered in the Fujifilm world. But let's at least talk about something that is hidden under the surface here. What has made the X100 series so popular among other things is the limitation to one focal length. Many photographers tell of their experience that they have learned to take photographs very differently with it, that zooming 
with their feet and practicing the composition have made them better photographers. I can understand this point, but it should also be mentioned that there are some focal length options for the X100B. Well, let's say two real and two faked ones. Let's start with the fakes. If I only save JPEGs, I can use the digital teleconverter that corresponds to a focal length range of 50mm or 70mm. This works quite well, but is not usable when I shoot RAW. I shoot JPEG in street photography, but I always save the RAW files as a backup, so the digital zoom will not be available then. Too bad. But when I take fast photos of my kids or on holidays, it really is enough for me. If you want to know more about the digital teleconverter, I made a video about it. Check it out. Two real focal length options are through converter lenses. TCL X102 and the WCL X102. These converters are screwed onto the 23mm fixed lens of the X100B at the front. If you buy the Mark II versions, the body of the X100 will will automatically recognize them. If not, you will have to tell the camera in the menus. So with the TCL you have an option of 50mm full frame and with the WCL a 28mm equivalent. But that's all of course. No macro, no longer tailor, no wider wide angle. So as I told you, two versatility points go to the X-T30 for the choice of over 30 Fuji X lenses plus the third-party stuff available and yet to come. Both cameras are certainly on some users' wish lists because of their compact size. Let us take the smaller size as an advantage. First let's have a look at a website called Camera Decision. And here we see the Fujifilm X-T30 is 10mm narrower and 6mm thinner than the Fujifilm X100B, but it is also 8mm taller, but all without the lens attached. Since I have the 23mm f2, I can show you the size difference directly. But there are also possibilities for the X-T30 to become even more compact with lens. I own the 27mm f2.8 and that brings us a lot closer. Okay, longer focal length, smaller aperture, no aperture ring, so somewhat unfair to compare. But there are definitely users who love the 40mm equivalent and take great street photos with it, for example. And then there is the 18mm f2, including a real aperture ring and having an almost pancake size. It's the oldest lens in the Fuji X system next to the 35 f1.4 and the AF performance is really annoying. What is the reason why I sold it? But if size is your Concern. These two could be a real alternative and this is why I cannot see a clear winner here. So both cameras have earned two points. Well, things start to get irrational here. When it comes to design, all Fuji fanboys go crazy when they talk about the X100B. The appearance has been improved again. The flush tilt screen, which is not recognized as such. The new ISO dial, the rounded corners, I can absolutely understand all of this. And I also love the design of the camera. But the X-T30 is also a super stylish piece of gear, especially in my color charcoal silver or Anthrazit in Germany. In terms of usability I can say that I miss an ISO dial on the X-T30 more than the drive dial on the X100B. The Q button on the X-T30 was a hot topic because many people seem to press it accidentally. So regarding design I guess it's a lot about personal taste. Due to the usability features with the better placed Q button and the existing ISO wheel this time the points go to the X100B. Until I bought the X100V, I probably wouldn't have thought about the viewfinder as a reason to buy a camera. Sure, it should have one at least, of course, and it should also offer decent resolution. But in this comparison, the viewfinder concepts are of course very different. And this point will clearly go to the X100V. Not only does it have 
the famous hybrid viewfinder with which you can switch between optical and electronic. The EVF alone also has the better specifications. 100% compared to 95% coverage and a 56% better resolution. And I personally underestimated the possibilities of the OVF. It is really fun to operate the camera in complete analog mode, even if you have the most important information available also in the OVF. It's a reduction back to analog times, if you like that. I do. Have a look at my analog challenge to see what I'm talking about. So one point clearly for the X100V here. Well, the shutters of both cameras differ fundamentally. While we have the usual focal plane shutter in the X-T30, the X100V has a leaf shutter. The basic differences? The shutter of the X-T30 works like a gate and sits in front of the sensor. The leaf shutter, also of the X100V, is located inside of the lens. The leaf shutter has a few advantages over the focal plane shutter and, for me personally, one disadvantage. It is faster, almost silent, the flash synchronization works all the way up to the maximum shutter speed of it and we do not have rolling shutter issues. The one disadvantage that I personally see with it. I don't get any tangible mechanical reaction from the camera when I press the shutter button. But this may be a very personal problem and the advantages of leaf shutters outweigh it. So one point again for the X100V. Well, while I'm recording this video, the X100V has one more film simulation available than the X-T30. Classic neck. I find myself using it exclusively in my color street photography at the moment. It's simply great what comes directly out of the camera with it. I still hope that a firmware update will improve the X-T30 and the X-T3. But at the moment, it's half a point for the X100V. The X100V is completely weather sealed if the optional WR kit is mounted. I am still waiting for mine. There are definitely delivery problems. It's 69 euros and a shame that it's not packed together with the X100V. I like to go outside in heavy rain to take photos and don't like to think about how to protect my gear. The X-T30 is lacking this possibility completely except for the lens if one with WR is mounted. A half point for the X100V. The X100V has a 4-level built-in ND filter that I find myself using all the time. It's definitely a very nice feature in bright sunlight or when you want to lower your shutter speed for catching movements or just to shoot with larger apertures for a shallower depth of field. I set the function to the front custom button of my X100V and I really like to use it a lot. So this is for sure another half point for the X100V because the X-T30 is lacking the ND filter. If you want to do sport photography or have any other reason for doing fast continuous shooting, children, animals, events, the X-T30 will be your weapon of choice. It's capable of shooting 30 stills per second while the X100V can only do 11 shots in the same time. But this one is not supposed to do sports photography with the 23mm lens. But still half a point for the X-T30. Both cameras can capture 4K video up to 30 frames per second, but with a 10 minute limitation. The two can also record full HD in 60 frames per second with a 15 minute limitation. So not much of a battle going on here. One little difference. The X100V can become very warm when doing video or continuous shooting. But that's a different story. So here we have a clear tie. The X-T30 has a full auto switch that the X100V is lacking. This may not be interesting for street or travel shooters, but for me, as someone who takes photos of kids in really changing situations, it's really nice to have. Or if you want to hand over your camera to someone to take pictures from you. Of course, you can set the P mode on the X100V, but it's not the same as full auto. Is it because the X100V is made for pro photographers, not casual shooters? I don't know, but I like the feature, so it's half a point for the X-T30. And the winner is 
the X100 B. However, only very narrowly with only a half point advantage. So it's more a felt tie. Well, what is the conclusion here? My personal opinion is the XT30 is clearly the winner in the main category's price and versatility and can also score in the video features and with continuous shooting. The camera is definitely the rational winner of this battle. In terms of EVF, shutter and the viewfinder, the X100V is clearly ahead. The new film simulation, classic neck, weather sealing and the built-in ND filter are really interesting for many street and travel photographers, even if none of them is a must-have. But the design is beyond any doubt and may give the push in this direction. In short, the X100V is definitely the more emotional decision. As I told you at the very beginning, it's a very personal thing which of both cameras is for you. Maybe the price is decisive, maybe the compactness, everything depends on your personal pro and contra list. Both are definitely great cameras that have their justification. I personally think it's extremely difficult to decide which one to keep. Maybe I keep both. What do you all mean? What are your decision criteria? What do you like or hate on one or the other camera? I'm really looking forward to your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Switch on the notifications so that you don't miss any more videos. Please take care of yourself. Have a good time. Ciao.